Hey everyone, good morning. Well, at least it's morning here in Vegas. How are you guys? Can you see and hear me? Just doing a quick check here, let me know. I'm gonna take a sip of coffee, because I need it. Hey Barbara, hey everyone. Yay, oh my gosh. It feels so good to be live. <laughs> Hey everyone, I see we have a very international crew here again. I love it, love it, love it, love it. Uh, yeah, definitely let me know where you're from in the chat. It's so awesome to see it all the time. Um, hey Abby, Abby Bliss White is here. As you guys know, one of my favorite YouTubers here. Rugged Glam, another wonderful YouTuber, hey. Dr. Barbara Clark, Jennifer Joyce Beauty, another wonderful YouTuber, hey guys. Mary's tea. Oh my goodness. Oh, oh, thanks. I missed you guys too. I um I was kind of looking forward to this like, you know, week or so off in Japan, but I kept itching to kind of want to live stream and talk to you guys. And I thought, you know, I kind of just had mixed feelings about it. I was like, it was nice to take a break, but I really missed you guys. <laughs> um Okay, let me just get some admin stuff out of the way. Um, I'm really jet lagged, so we'll start there. <laughs> I'm like really, really jet lagged. Um, oh, thank you, thank you, thank you. Yes, I celebrated my birthday while I was in Japan. And I think on that day, on the 21st, I don't even know, I was so messed up when I got there. I think I was traveling from Kyoto to Hiroshima. I think that was what I was doing on the 21st. Um, but yes, I had such a great birthday, obviously I was in Japan. Um, but I am so jet lagged. I did not have horrible jet lag over there. And I think that's always what happens when you travel. It's like, when you go there, everything is fine. <laughs> You're just excited to be where you are. You're like up and at them and you kind of get into a schedule pretty quickly, or maybe you're not there long enough for it to even matter. But, um, oh, thank you guys. Um, but yeah, I, um, I'm, I am really, really effed up right now. So when I traveled home, I was awake for like 32 hours straight. And I was like, awesome. I'm just going to go to bed. I'm exhausted. I'll sleep through the night and that'll, you know, that'll start like my schedule back. No, I was exhausted, fell asleep and then woke up in like four hours. Anyway, it's been like that where, I've like had to nap in the middle of the afternoon where I just couldn't keep my eyes open to like not being able to sleep through the night, which is unlike me. I'm pretty regimented with my sleep. So anyway, um, I feel delirious and yeah, there's a 16 hour time difference. So Japan is 16 hours ahead of Las Vegas. So it's like barely in the same day. Um, so yes, I was able to celebrate my birthday twice and I kind of like forgot about it and you know, wasn't calculating the time difference properly. So I was in Japan and it was at night there, but it still wasn't my birthday here yet. And I was like, none of my friends are texting me. <laughs> of course they did. When I woke up, I, I saw a bunch. Anyway, um, yes, I've heard it takes, um, like the difference that there is, it takes an hour. Um, it takes a day for each hour of time difference. So essentially it's supposed to take me about 16 days to get back to normal, <laughs> which is just, is just cruel. It's just cruel because 16 days to get back to normal when I was only there for about 10 or 11 days is like silly. <laughs> it's just silly. So anyway, um, yeah, I am really jet lagged. So I'm not going to be doing my makeup today because on a good day, I can't talk and do makeup at the same time. So I was like, let's not try that today. Let's um, let's do something different. I also, I also had to wash a bunch of my brushes. They were so badly in need of a wash. So most of my face brushes are still damp. So I was like, I, I really can't do my makeup. Um, so we're gonna be doing my morning skincare together. I just washed my face. Um, I sat down and I have all, all the things that I'm going to use, uh, that I normally use in the morning. So anyway, um, I have, uh, everything that I'm going to be using down below in my description box. So I wanted to mention that we'll be doing skincare. I'm deliriously tired. And, um, I also wanted to mention that I will, 
I'm trying to really kind of get the new release videos out. So I should be having the, do I have them here? Oh yeah. The Pat McGrath, uh, the Blitz Astral Quads. I should have that video up tomorrow. We'll see. Uh, I also have the two Natasha Denona Gold uh, products that she dropped. I, th I think they're for holiday, but it's the gold highlighter and then the mini gold eyeshadow. Um, I may stick that into like a trying new makeup kind of video. So that should be coming up also. Um, I Yeah, aren't these quads awesome? Hold on, hold on. Let me show you. This is, do they have different names? They do. This one is the Iconic Illumination. I don't know where she comes up with these names, but here's like the red one. Gorgeous. Um, and this one is Nocturnal Nirvana. This is the one that comes in the blue box. And surprisingly, I'm more excited for this one probably because this one is a little bit more unique than this one. They're both unique. They're both unique. Um, so anyway, hopefully that video will come tomorrow. And then a trying new makeup with the Natasha Denona will come sometime soon. And then I do want to do, I, I do want to do um, a video using some of the uh, makeup that I purchased in Japan, um, which I hauled for you guys. Um, so, all right. So um, some travel tips. So that's what we're going to be talking about today. Um, some travel tips to Japan. And, you know, I don't know if these things are, are gonna be redundant or common sense. But I mean, I, I have traveled quite a bit for work, um, but it's always been within the US pretty much. And so traveling within the US, I always feel like it's just not that big of a deal. Like as long as I have my my ID and my credit cards, like I'm fine. It's just, it's just no big deal. So, um, so yeah, so traveling internationally is kind of uh, different for me. And um, I heard she was discontinuing the six pan palettes. Uh, so Carrie is saying um, she she's heard that Pat McGrath is gonna be discontinuing the six pan palettes. I think maybe, at least I feel like they're not on the Sephora site anymore and then they were marked down. So I don't know, I don't know. Or I don't know if maybe she's doing another um, like run of everything. So. Anyway, um, so Japan. Okay, so I hit four cities when I went to Japan. I um, went to Kyoto, Hiroshima, Osaka, and ended up in Tokyo. So the first thing I wanted to mention, because I didn't realize this, um, but Tokyo has two airports. It has Narita, which is the big one, I think it's the one that I knew of, um, but I actually flew into Haneda, which I had never heard of before. I've always heard of people flying into Narita. So I was a little bit confused and I was like, okay, um, I'm flying into Haneda. So Haneda basically is um, a smaller airport, but it's just been redone. So I think it's opened up for, um, for more flights. At least that's what I heard. In any case, it is much, much closer to Tokyo than Narita is. Um, Narita is like over an hour away, like if you take a bus, and Haneda is, I think, about 30 minutes away. So um, just FYI. Oh, Kara C is here. Kara is another wonderful uh, YouTuber. And um, sorry, sidebar. She just had, I think, gastric bypass. I think that's that's what... She just had, anyway, she just lost four, I think 40 pounds. Was it 40 pounds or 50 pounds? I just saw that on uh, Twitter. So I just wanted to congratulate Kara uh, for that. And just, I think it's amazing. Anyway, um, yes, 40 pounds, 40 pounds as of today. I think that's incredible, incredible. So big shout out to Kara. I think that's um, absolutely amazing. And so brave of you. I know a few people who've gone through the, the gastric bypass and it's not, it's not easy. And I think psychologically, it's very, very difficult, despite what's going on physically. I think psychologically, it's really um, tough. So anyway, 
congratulations to her. So I just wanted to mention that. I don't know, again, I don't know if any of this is common sense, but Haneda is much closer <laughs> to Tokyo if that's a concern of yours. Cause I flew into Haneda, but I left from Narita and I don't know why. I don't know why Delta did that to me. So um, the other thing I wanted to mention was some very, very good advice that I got before I left for Japan, thankfully, was to get a Japan Rail Pass and to get a pocket Wi-Fi. Uh, I actually, in the description box down below, I left a link to the Japan Rail Pass um, site where you can order it. And the Rail Pass, basically, I think there's two levels. There's like, you can buy it for one week, two weeks, three weeks or whatever. So I bought it for seven days and you can kind of build your trip around that. And that's what I used basically to get from city to city. It's like basically gives you a pass to get onto the JR rail, which includes the bullet trains, which Japan is known for. So there's two levels. There's one for like the regular car. There's three seats across. They're not quiet. Although in Japan, everyone is quiet, which is effing amazing. Um, but my friend and I that I went with, I went with my friend Melissa, we decided to splurge for what they call the green cars. And the green cars are, they're a little bit roomier and they're quiet cars. So you're really not supposed to talk on them at all. Um, and then there are only two seats across. So if you're traveling with just one other person, I highly recommend um, getting the green car rail pass. The seats are so comfortable so, so comfortable. They're like akin to first class in uh, like on a plane because you can recline all the way back. They have like foot rests that come up. Um, and it was probably, I want to say maybe $70 more expensive than the regular car. And we got the seven day pass. So it was $10 more a day. Um, and I believe you can reserve seats, which was also really important. Um, so we did that because a lot of the trains, you know, the cars would sell out or whatever. So it was nice to be able to, um, it was nice to be able to reserve seats. Um, so yes. So Barbara is agreeing with me. The green car, uh, green car is definitely worth the splurge. Yeah, I agree. I agree. I didn't know if I was being like princessa about it. I was like, let's just get the first class cars. Um, but it was really, really nice, especially when you're traveling so much. And when we went from Osaka to Tokyo, it's like almost a three hour train ride. And, you know, you're tired and you've got all your luggage. And anyway, I, I think it's really worth uh, the splurge. Um, thank you. Thank you, Abby. Um, the trains are super packed like sardines. So, um, so everyone was kind of telling me, they're like, oh my God, like it's so crazy in Tokyo. It's so crazy in Tokyo, the subways, this and that. I think because I lived in New York city for so long, it was fine. I didn't think, and we actually, when we got, no, not when we got there, actually when we took the train from Osaka to Tokyo, we got there at rush hour and it was, it was crowded and I felt like my luggage was in, in the way, but it's not, if you've ever been to New York, it's about the same. It's, um, it's about the same. Um, and yes, the Japan Rail Pass is only available to tourists. So what happens is when you order the Japan Rail Pass, what you're sent is like a voucher. So when you land at the airport, you have this voucher and you go to the Japan Rail Pass uh, like kiosk. It's like a storefront and you go, and we had to wait in line actually for a very long time. There were like huge like tour groups in front of us. And so every person was like getting their rail pass. Anyway, so you just have to show them your passport, your voucher, and they give you this, it's basically like this card and they tape it onto like a bigger pamphlet and just keep that with you at all times. Because what I didn't realize, I thought the Japan rail pass was just for the bullet train that was going to get us from city to city, but it actually works on some of the trains that are like intra-city. So, you know, I wasn't exactly clear which rail systems were which, but on the big map, you'll see like JR, you'll see this like designation for Japan rail trains. And so we actually were able to take it while we were in Hiroshima and we were actually able to take it while we were, um, uh, yeah, while we were in Tokyo. So um, anyway. I would definitely hold on to that, and um, it's it was worth every single penny. It was really amazing, actually. Um, 
So, oh, I live in the same hotel as you did in Tokyo. I agree, it's small, but the location is so convenient. Yes, so what I've also done down below is I've listed all the places that I stayed um, in all four cities, and I really enjoyed all of them. So I stayed at um, a hostel called 22 Pieces in Kyoto. And when I think of a hostel, I think of, you know, punk beds and you're in a room with like, you know, eight other people. Um, I think a hostel, um, or at least what they call a hostel in Japan is just maybe like a three star or below kind of hotel. Um, so it, we had a private bath. Um, you know, there's just like, there's no room service. Um, the daily maid service is like, very, very minimal. Like they'll just leave you some new towels. They'll like, you know, sweep up a little bit or whatever. And then that's it. Um, they don't make your bed or change your sheets or whatever. So unless you're there, I think for over a week anyway, um, I loved all the places I stayed in. Um, so 22 pieces in Kyoto was wonderful. It was very, very modern, uh, again, considered a hostel. So it was pretty minimal, but it was a great location within walking distance from the train station. And if you guys followed my Instagram stories, I was like going nuts over the bathroom because it was just beautiful. Very, very modern. It's the one that had the Dyson hairdryer in there. And it was just, um, it was just, just great. Um, and in Hiroshima, I ended up staying at the Sheridan Grand, which was definitely much more of like a five-star hotel. And I was there um, because Sonia recommended that one. She said that she was staying there and she said, it's just the most convenient. Um, it's comfortable and it's basically attached to the train station. So, you know, we got out in Hiroshima and we were like all ready to take a train here and do this and do that, but it was like right there. So it was very, very convenient. and. Um, Sonia stays there basically because she's there for business. And so she just needs something that's very convenient. So we stayed there and it was lovely. They had a lovely, lovely afternoon like snack buffet. It was basically like high tea. It was wonderful. So I definitely recommend that hotel also. Um, and oh, Maris, you're learning Japanese. You know, I, I kind of got the itch while I was there. I am not a language person not at all. Like I barely can grasp English. So, um, so for me to want to learn another language is a big deal. And I really wanted to while I was there, but anyway, I digress. Um, and then Osaka, I stayed at the flag and that was again, like another type of hostel it was very similar to 22 pieces in Kyoto. And, um, the room was much, much smaller, uh, but the bathroom was another like wonderful, wonderful bathroom. It was just amazing. Um, and we were only in Osaka for one night. So that was great. And was that close to the train station? Oh no, we got into Osaka and then I think we had to take like a, a more local train closer to where we were from like the bullet train. Um, but it was, it was great. It was a great location. And then in Tokyo, we stayed at Tokyo Stay, which is in the middle of Shinjuku. And Shinjuku is like a, a district in Tokyo. And it's it's almost like Times Square in New York. It's It just, it has everything. Um, it's pretty crowded all the time, but it's very, very convenient, like super convenient. And there's tons of restaurants everywhere, tons of shopping, transportation's close. Um, I, I really enjoyed staying there, um, but we did have to take a train from the bullet train station, which is the Tokyo station, which is closer to, I guess it's closer to Ginza or it's in Ginza, which is another really lovely uh, like shopping district basically in Tokyo, commercial district and a lot of really nice shopping, a lot of higher end shopping. Um, so uh, anyway, um, so Kyoto is absolutely beautiful. It was the most, I wanna say like the most like historic that I could that I could sense well Kyoto and and Hiroshima, but it was very very quaint. It was very charming. There are a lot of shrines there, um, and it was it was great. So my one tip <laughs> uh, about Kyoto is if you do feel like going to the gates, which is the huge huge shrine with all the orange uh, gates. What's the full name? It's um, Fush Fushari Inari. No. I messed that up. Maybe Yoga, you can help me out. Um, but uh, Fushimi, Fushimi Inari. Is that right? 
Fushimi Inari. Okay. Um, so we went there. I was like, oh yeah, the gates, you know, it's like you see pictures of it or whatever, you hear it. Um, there was a whole art installation in New York based on them. And I was like, oh yeah, the gates. So what I didn't realize is that the gates, this whole thing is basically, you can basically walk up a mountain, like underneath or through these gates and then walk down the mountain. Uh, and it's a mountain. I just, I did not realize uh, at all what I was getting myself into. And I had sneakers on, but it was, it was kind of rainy. Anyway, prepare yourself for kind of a hike and you don't have to go all the way to the top um, of this mountain, but it is, it's so beautiful. And it's not a hike in that, like, you know, you're, it's not like you're bouldering or like doing anything like that. There are steps um, or like slopes, you know, it is, like paved, it's almost like you're walking on a sidewalk. Um, but it can, it's pretty steep um, the entire way up. Um, and then going down, it's pretty steep. And a lot of people who had huffed it up, it's like on the way down, they were, they had to be really, really careful. We had to be really, really careful because it was slippery or whatever. So anyway, um, if you want to do that in Kyoto, just a tip from me. And I'm like, am I the only person that didn't know this? But Melissa, again, my friend that I was with, she was like, no, I had no idea. <laughs> and when you get there, there's like a whole map, you know, you are here and it shows you like, you know, this path, that map is only like one third of it. It's like the bottom of it. I think it's like the first place where you can like basically cut off and go back down. We didn't realize that we, we, once I got into it, I was like, we are going to the top. <laughs> anyway, it took a lot longer. My legs were so sore the next like couple of days. Um, so just a warning, just a warning if you want to do that. Um, so you're basically walking on concrete. Um, it's like it's like if you're walking on old sidewalk. That's what it kind of looks like. It almost looks like stone, but it's like concrete. It's like that pebbly concrete. Um, and. So if someone's asked me, where's the best place to eat in Japan? They're all amazing. Every place I went to was amazing. I had ramen. I was introduced to okonomiyaki. Um, the sushi was amazing. I did not have not one bad meal there. Not at all. They have, they're like known for their pancakes. They're called souffle, souffle pancakes. And you can find souffle pancake restaurants all over Tokyo. I would go there. It, just amazing. Absolutely amazing. Um, when is the next September festival? The festival is usually around the autumn equinox. So whenever that falls. So it's usually around September 21st, 22nd, around there. Um, but, you know, this is a really small village. So it's not like they have social media. They don't really announce it um, or anything. Um, and it's... And, you know, and there was actually a typhoon going through when I was there. And so Sonia actually texted me and she was like, they may be canceling the festival. And I was like, okay, I understand, but that sucks. Um, but the typhoon actually moved uh, more north than they were expecting. And so we were able to continue on with the festival. Thank goodness. Um, so, yeah. So all of the hotels I stayed at, I really liked. I really liked. They're listed down below. I recommend them. Um, the Brush Festival was amazing. Uh, sorry, let me continue on with my skincare. So, okay. So that was my tip for Kyoto. Um, what else? Hold on. What did I do? I did that. That. Oh, I'm actually trying a new serum. This is, have you guys ever heard of this? Ubuna, they have four different types of serums and I'm trying the intensive hydration serum. I have really dry skin. It has um, oh, it has a really thin consistency, um, but it's very, very silky feeling. So anyway, I'm just gonna rub some of this in. It's been nice, it's been nice. I ran out of my uh, Kipris, the one that comes in the blue bottle. That's like the serum I have been using, which I love. Um, but I really want to just test and try some other things out. So anyway, I'm trying this one out and it's made in Japan. So I thought that that was a sign. I don't know if you guys can see the Japanese writing there. Um, anyway, there's no scent. No, 
There's no scent at all, which is nice. Um, good morning, good morning, everyone. Oh, Ireland, okay. So when I was in Hiroshima, the only thing I did basically was discover Okonomiyaki and go to the Brush Festival. So the Brush Festival is in Kumano, which is a very small village outside of Hiroshima. And uh, we got there one night, basically got into the hotel, ate dinner and then like passed out. And then we woke up the next morning and then uh, met up with Sonia and went over to Kumano for the Brush Festival. Um, I have not been able to play with any of the brushes <laughs> that I purchased. I wanted to wash them first only because they've they've been traveling. They've been traveling as um, as far as I have. So I need to wash those and use them still. Um, and right before I left, Sonia G came out with her sky, her face, um, face set. And so I've been wanting to use those because I just, I haven't been able to bond with those brushes yet. So I use them a little bit and I've washed those now. And anyway, um, so the brush festival, uh, I believe it goes on for like an evening and two days. I only went for a day, but they do have, and all I did was kind of just walk around, um, and you know, just took in the vendors, took in whatever ceremonies were going on. Um, Sonia was in and out of like business meetings or whatever. So we just kind of like met up every once in a while. Um, but it was brutally, brutally hot. And I think it's faded by now, but any tan that I got was basically walking around the brush festival. Um, and then they had this huge food court. So it was just a really nice, fun time. It was, it's, a, it's fairly small. It's, um, I don't know, it's maybe like a city block long. Um, and most of the brushes there are brushes for calligraphy. So, hey, Brenda, good morning. Um, so, um, sorry, just trying to moderate comments. Um, Um, okay, so sorry. <laughs> yes, I had to, I had to block someone. Um, so yeah, so the brush festival is wonderful. Most of the brushes there are for calligraphy though. That is what they um, mainly make brushes for, but I was able to see um, a lot of brushes. So Sonia took me to the Chickahoto um, headquarters. And so they have this, you know, main store area where they have most of their brushes up in a display. Um, and you guys saw the brushes that I purchased there, um, in my haul video. Um, and then they have this little outlet. Now I don't know if that outlet is open all the time, or if it was just open during this brush festival, or maybe it's just open on weekends. You know, I don't know what the situation was, but it was like across the parking lot. It was like this other door. And this outlet basically had, um, you know, less expensive brushes. So they had brushes that were either off, you know, like seconds, basically brushes that didn't, um, that weren't up to their standards. And then they had brush lines that I had never seen before. So these brush lines must have been um, just, you know, more, I don't want to say cheaper, but more inexpensively made uh, brushes. And maybe they were um, synthetics and things like that. Um, so no, not all of the brushes are available in Tokyo. So especially the ones that were in the Chikahoto outlet. So um, what was I gonna say? Oh, so while I was there, I, you know, I want to take advantage of the outlet. Um, they had just released that Silver Fox collection. So I spent a lot of money at Chikahoto and my credit card didn't go through. And so I was like, oh crap, you know, maybe it's like, you know, it had been working up until then. So I'm like, I know it's not the fact that I'm traveling internationally, they know all this stuff. So anyway, I ended up giving them 
cash. It, it turned out to be this whole thing. And I was using the wrong card. I was using my debit card, which of course has a limit. And I gave them my credit card, but after giving them all the cash that I had. So when I went back to the festival, the vendors only took cash. So there were some like uh, other brushes from Mizuho that I wanted to try, but I didn't have any cash on me. <laughs> so I kind of screwed up. I kind of like blew everything basically in Chickahota. So I didn't get any other brushes at the brush festival, uh, but it was okay. I mean, I got, I got plenty and it was totally, totally fine. Um, so I actually have not tried any Coyuto brushes yet. I definitely want to. Um, I had been eyeing, oh, I'm such a liar. I do have a couple of Coyuto brushes. They were very, very special, very limited edition. And so I don't use them often, which is why I forgot about them. But I have some red squirrel hair ones. They're even kind of dusty. I don't use them that often. Um, but they are beautiful absolutely beautiful these like these kind of limited edition squirrel hair brushes and, and the reason why they're limited edition is because they can only um, brush the hairs off of these squirrels like once a year um so they're only available for a very short period of time and you know and they you can only brush so much off so there's not that many there aren't you know they don't manufacture them in large quantities. Anyway, these brushes are amazing. Um, if you can ever get your hands on them. I'm trying to remember the time of year that I got them. I want to say late winter. I'll have to look back. Um, but those are some red squirrel hairs from Coyuto, which I really enjoy. And then I got some uh, white Canadian squirrel hairs from them. I think. Oh, yeah. And these are lovely too. These are not quite as like minky as the red squirrel, but they pick up a little bit more product. So anyway, those are the only Coyoto brushes I have. I don't have any of like the regular line brushes. So I always feel like I'm like, I don't really have that much experience with Coyoto, but, um, but I do have those five. Um, and they're lovely. I think they're they're lovely. I think they're really well made. So um, I saw that Beautylish just started carrying them. I watched Tara Babies actually haul some. So definitely on my list. I definitely want to uh, try them for sure. Um, I'd love to feel the Silver Fox brushes. The Silver Fox brushes, those are probably the softest brushes I've ever felt. I can't wait to use them. Um, hello, France. Hi. Uh, let's see. Okay. So, so that was basically my experience at the brush festival. Again, check out my Instagram stories. You know, they have a brush burning festival. They're just so, and this is like the kind of overall thing I kind of took away from the Japanese people while I was there is that they're just so respectful about everything and everyone, um, like on the streets, everyone is like quiet, respectful, they're polite, they're, you know, and this, of course, of course, this is a generalization, but as a culture, I feel like, you know, in coming from a place like New York and even Vegas, um, where everyone is just loud, everything is loud, everyone is like, and, and in New York especially, it's like everyone can be so obnoxious, but in Tokyo where it's packed, it didn't feel that way. It just was so calm and I just, I just loved it. I just absolutely loved Japan. It was like being in a big city, but you didn't feel the like grind and the pressure of it. It was just wonderful, just absolutely wonderful. And before Melissa and I left, we were already trying to figure out like when we could go back and like what we would hit and what we would do. And we definitely want to go back to Kyoto um, and Tokyo, obviously it was just so much fun. Um, so too many people in Osaka and Tokyo, you know, I, again, I think coming from New York, it didn't feel that bad. Um, it, Osaka definitely f did not, at least for me, did not feel, uh, that crowded at all. Um, and Tokyo, we were in Shinjuku and I thought maybe like this was not one of the more populated places, but someone was like, no, it's very crowded there. And I didn't really, I didn't really feel it. I thought it was, um, 
Hey, Pauline, I thought it was really manageable. And again, I think it's a lot of how people behave. And it, yeah, it was just, it, it's one of those countries where I feel like I would not hesitate in recommending someone travel alone to. Um, I can be kind of paranoid about that. I don't, I don't think you should travel alone most of the time, <laughs> but I'm like, oh, Japan, I, I feel like, yeah, you could travel alone. It's fine. It's like, it feels safe. It's comfortable. No, yeah. And no one makes you feel unwelcome. And I know like three things in Japanese and there's plenty of people who don't speak English there. So it was a lot of pointing and smiling and nodding and, and it was great. And it was always, you know, it always ended very cordially where I feel like I've been places where it's not, it's, t it's not taken as nicely. So, um, Oh, I've heard Singapore is similar. So that's another place I would like to go to. Oh, the other thing I wanted to mention, because again, I don't know if this is common knowledge and I'm just a total like dolt, but it was hot. Japan was really, really hot and muggy. And I knew it was going to be more humid than Las Vegas because most places are, and it is an island. So I was like, okay, I was prepared for some humidity, but I did not realize it was going to be quite as warm as it was. Um, and I'm, I'm glad I didn't pack like anything warm to wear. I mean, I did pack a couple of things just in case, but I didn't need it at all. And um, the more I was talking to people who live there, they're like, oh, you never, ever want to come in like July or August. Like, never like people don't go outside in july or august or they go to the northern part of the country um but the main island where like tokyo is and kyoto and osaka it's very very warm and i didn't realize that um really did not i had no idea um did the air taste different i don't think i noticed i don't think i noticed um, yes, yeah, September is usually still hot and humid. It, it really was. And I was surprised. I thought it was going to have a similar kind of, uh, temperature tempered zone to like Seattle, which is cooler and milder. And it really, uh, it, it really didn't, um, not humid during winter there. Yeah. I mean, I, yeah. And when it gets cold, it usually is a little bit less humid. Um, so yeah, so the the food the food was great. I don't know what else to say. The food was amazing. We I just used Google Maps and was like, what's near me and what gets like good ratings. I again, all of this is on my Instagram stories. Um, and if you follow my personal Instagram, I did post a few more things on there, which I I bet it's basically like my food Instagram. Um, but you'll find a link to it on my regular Instagram on my beauty Instagram, um, which is down below in the description box. So. Um, yeah, the 7-Eleven is fantastic. It's better than any 7-Eleven here. It has like full on meals. In fact, I, I, did I buy a meal there one night? I think I did buy a meal there one night, but it wasn't a good meal. It was basically like a cream puff and like a corn dog or something. <laughs> um, but it was just, uh, it was just, it's an amazing place. It really is an amazing place. Like this one, um, in Hiroshima, basically my friend Melissa that I was with, she was like, we have to try and find okonomiyaki here. And I was like, what is that? And she was like, well, I discovered it when I was in Hong Kong, but it's a Japanese food. And I was like, okay, let's, let's find it. So all of the train stations in Japan, I don't know if this is a tourist trap, but they are amazing. They're like wonderlands. The train stations have everything you could possibly need. They have 7-Elevens, they have shopping, they have excellent restaurants. They have just everything. They have waiting rooms. They have lovely bathrooms, like everything. Um, and so we went into the Hiroshima train station and she's like down in the basement. It says, again, we we're looking at Google maps. It says that there's four Okonomiyaki restaurants down here. So I was like, okay, let's try it. So we went and it was so good. I had never had it before. And so it's basically at least what we learn later is that there's different styles of okonomiyaki and we were having the Hiroshima style. So it's like a very, um, it's all done on a grill. It starts with a very, very thin crepe. Then they put on cabbage, which is like steamed on top. Then they layer in like slices of bacon. Then they layer in noodles, 
not quite as thick as udon, almost like a lo mein. I don't know what the equivalent is in Japan. Um, they layer noodles on, and then you can throw other stuff in there, but I only put cheese on there. And then they have a fried egg, and they put that on top, basically. And then you put the okonomiyaki sauce on there, which is basically like a mild oyster sauce, I want to say. And then you put the kewpie mayo on top, and you eat it. And it's a total mess, and I loved it. It was so, so, so good. Um, so then when we went to... Where were we? I guess we were in Osaka. Yeah, we were in Osaka and I was like, let's try and find Okonomiyaki again. And we did. And that's when we realized that there's two different styles, the Hiroshima, which I just described, and the Osaka style, which is more of like a frittata, which is basically like a, you know, like whipped up egg with stuff in it. And they put it on a grill and it's like a pancake shape. <coughs> Melissa likes the Osaka style and I like the Hiroshima style. So when we went to um, Tokyo, we found this place, it's called Zen. And again, just found it on Google Maps and it was near our hotels, maybe like three blocks away. It's called Zen. And they had all these different types of okonomiyaki. So I got my Hiroshima style, Melissa got her Osaka style. <clears throat> and we got some yakitori, which are those octopus balls. So yeah, I mean, Google Maps, I don't know how people traveled before Google Maps, basically. I really don't. But it was, we just depended on it entirely for transportation, for restaurants, for, you know, where to go, for what to do, for what time things opened and closed. I mean, it was amazing. Um, Yes, Osaka style is mixed everything. So, <laughs> so, um, oh yeah, the yakitori. So octopus balls, they're basically like these deep fried balls and there's just like a chunk of octopus inside. That's it. So if you like squid or octopus, you'd probably like them. The texture is a little bit soft for me. I thought it was gonna be like a ball, like of dough of some sort, but it's a little bit, it's softer. It's a little bit gooier than that, which I was not, Oh, takoyaki. Am I saying the wrong thing? Probably. See, language is not my thing. <laughs> um, yeah, takoyaki. Sorry, those are the octopus balls. Um, so we had those, where were we? In Osaka, again. We had them off of the street. This guy had um, like a little stand and I think he was like, I don't, I don't think he was Michelin rated, but he was like Michelin mentioned in one of the Michelin guides. And I was like, oh, it's gotta be pretty decent. Um, so yeah, yakitori, it was, uh, oh, yakitori is the chicken skewers. Takoyaki is the octopus balls. Thank you. <laughs> uh, <we're> talking, <laughs> yes, we're talking octopus balls. Um, When I was in Osaka and Kyoto, the air was different. None of the infamous New York City street subway smells. You know, nothing smells like New York City. <laughs> New York City is a very special, special smell. I don't know if you guys remember this. Maybe it was last year or the year before. No, longer than that. But um, I think it was Diptyque, you know, the, the French candle maker. They came out with this um, New York line. And it was like the sense of New York. <laughs> <laughs> they got torn apart basically. People were like, what does it smell like urine? Does it smell like the subway? Does it smell like garbage? Does it smell like rat poison? Like, anyway, um, I kind of miss that. <laughs> uh, so did you go to the food department store underground? So um, Yoko was asking if I went to the food in a, in a department store underground. So in Tokyo, we went to Isitan, which is the gigantic, gigantic department store, which is where I got the Shakuta brushes. So in their basement level, which is actually where the subway comes in, is a humongous food court. Humongous and very, very crowded. That was very, very crowded, very, very packed. And anything that looked interesting to me, I was kind of like, oh, could I have one? And they were like sold out, sold out. So I don't know what time you had to get there, but I was there pretty, it felt like pretty early for dinner, but it, it was it was absolutely nuts in there. But everything looked amazing. 
absolutely amazing. The only issue is there wasn't anywhere in this food court. It was definitely like a grab and go. There was no place to sit. They had little restaurants. Um, they had a cafe downstairs in the second basement level. And then they had like more restaurants all the way upstairs. I think on the seventh floor of this Isitan in Shinjuku. Um, but in this actual food court, it was like a grab and go situation. So anyway, it was, it was just so much fun to walk around and see everything. Everything in Japan just looks beautiful. Everything is like presented beautifully, packaged beautifully. It just, I loved it. I loved it. I mean, Melissa and I were just like freaking out every corner. We turn around and be like, Oh my God, like freaking out. It was so amazing. Um, did you go to the fish market? We did not did we we did not go to a fish market. In Kyoto, we went to the Nishiki market, which is just like a huge food market. I don't know if they consider that a fish market. I'm not sure. Um, they did have a lot of fish, and that is definitely in my Instagram stories. Um, but they just had just amazing food, and I had some very interesting stuff there, which I can't even recall anymore. Um but yeah, it, it was, it was, yeah, it was great. It was, it was so, so great. Um, Terry McCormick is asking if I purchased any yarn. So I don't know if you, if anyone is new uh, to my channel here, hello, welcome. <laughs> um, I used to be a knitwear designer. I, I guess I could say I'm still a knitwear designer. I'm a knitwear designer. And um, so Terry's asking if I purchased any yarn there. I did not purchase any yarn there, but I did purchase uh, some fabric. So the only, I shouldn't say the only reason, but one of the major reasons why we wanted to go to Osaka is because one of our favorite um, fabric manufacturers is based there. And the line is called Nani Iro, N-A-N-I-I-R-O. And the designer of it, her name is Naomi Ito, I-T-O. And she basically um, creates um, these fabric designs by like, they're just like watercolors basically. And then I believe they're screen printed on. So I did purchase some of that stuff. Do I have it here? Oh, I have the bag here. Let me show you guys. And look, this is just how they packaged my stuff to go. And it looks like a gift. Um, so I just purchased just like a big hunk of this wool fabric. It is like a very, I don't know if you guys can see, hold on. It's a really light gauze and it's um, like a loose herringbone. It's so, so beautiful. Now I don't know if you can buy this particular fabric online, but um, I'll update my description box down below, but there is an online site called Miss Matatabi. Uh, she used to have an Etsy shop and now she's, I think she's gotten so popular. She has her own site now and you can buy a lot of the Nani Eero fabric there. You can also get it, I'll, I'll link, I'll have a bunch of links down below the description box. Um, so anyway, I, yes, Nani Eero. Um, so yeah, so that's that's like the crafty thing that I purchased. I'm gonna do a separate video, um, basically my third and last Japan haul uh, video where I talk about all the like non makeup makeup brushes that I purchased because I did get some sneakers I got uh, Some stationery. I got some of that stuff. So I'm gonna do another video on that. That'll Yeah, that'll be next week sometime um, Did you enjoy bakery stores in Japan? Oh boy, did I yes, I did uh, so there was actually a Joel uh, Robuchan like a Le Pen cafe uh, at the Shinjuku station, right by the new woman building. And um, I mean, the most amazing pastries ever. And in Kyoto, I wish I could remember it, but in the train station, which again, the train stations are magical. <laughs> they had this um, like cake station and it was just like, 
I, they're really, really simple. It was almost like a really refined, simplified version of like a moon cake. And so they had just these like fillings that were like dense on the inside. So I got some black sesame cakes. Oh my God. And my friend Melissa got some green tea ones, matcha ones. Oh my God. We ate them on the train ride from Kyoto to Hiroshima. And I was like, I want to go back and get more because I sold them in boxes of like, you know, eight or whatever, but I just got one. I mean, I want to go back to Kyoto just for those. Oh man. Yeah. The black sesame cake. <gasps> Yay, Arne Nicole. Hi. Yay, Arne Nicole is here. Another wonderful, wonderful YouTube channel. Definitely check her out. She actually just posted a video where she's at the Muse Beauty Pro headquarters playing with the Vizier Grand Pro 3 palette with Alphonse, who is like one of the most amazing makeup artists out there. So anyway, check out Yay Arne Nicole. Wonderful content, wonderful woman. She's become such a good friend of mine. Um, so, oh, how was the matcha ice cream? The matcha ice cream was lovely. Um, this was a, an interesting thing I noticed in, in Japan all over, in all the train stations and all over Tokyo, soft serve ice cream. That's just like a big, big thing. They just love their soft serve ice cream, which I enjoy as well. So I really like that. Um, the other thing uh, I wanted to mention was in Tokyo, It's it was very interesting, but things don't open very early. And like even coffee shops. So sometimes coffee shops will open at like eight or nine. And for me, that just always seemed really, really late. Um, because if you want something before work, I don't know. So anyway, just that was another observation. Um, oh, how did my mini printer work out? So I brought it with me to Japan, but just never had time um, to actually do it there. So when I got home, I kind of, I had to recharge it, hooked it up and I printed out a couple of pictures. So it's downstairs, <laughs> but uh, maybe I'll show you guys my little traveler's notebook once I kind of get it together. Cause I saved some, you know, business cards of places. I saved some of my train tickets and stuff. So I don't know if I, if I ever have the time to kind of like fill it in the way I want to, um, maybe I'll show it to you. If not, I'll just show you the pictures that I um, printed out and maybe I'll do that when I do my third haul. Um, so I want to go back to New York just for the Italian ice. Oh yeah. New York Italian ice is special. Definitely, definitely special. Um, oh, okay. So Barbara Clark is reminding me of the weird tax-free packaging. Um, so this was another kind of travel tip I wanted to mention. Um, so Japan is very, very tourist friendly. I realized, you know, like with the Japan Rail Pass being only for tourists, only for people with foreign passports, um, you know, the pocket Wi-Fi thing, like it, they're just really, really tourist friendly. So when I was shopping in Kyoto, I noticed that they had these stickers on some of the storefronts and it says tax free shopping. And there's like, you know, a graphic of like a cherry blossom. And I was like, or maybe it was a sun. Anyway, um, I it didn't even register. And so the first thing I purchased in Kyoto, which again, I'll, I'll haul um, in the next video. Um, the gentleman that worked there didn't speak English and I, I don't speak Japanese. So there was a lot of, you know, and he kept asking, he was like, passport, passport. And I was like, why does he need my passport? So I gave him my passport. I thought maybe you just want to check my ID for my credit card. And he just said, oh, okay. And he went through this whole thing. He like filled out a whole form. He had all these carbon copies. He stapled it into my passport. I was like, what is going on? And then, you know, and then there was the normal transaction. I signed for my credit card, you know, gave me the receipts or whatever. And then he packaged it all up in, well, like something like a bag like this, like a clear plastic bag. But he didn't, he didn't say much about it. So I was like, oh, okay, wow, they're really, you know, and again, I was like, wow, they're really into their packaging because it was like this like plastic packaging and they put it into a paper bag and then he put it into a shopping bag. I was like, Okay, thanks. Um, and I didn't, I didn't really understand what was going on. And I was kind of looking at what was in the passport, but I was like, whatever, you know, we were busy and we were traveling. So I took, I opened up that plastic and I took out, I had bought this like little denim handbag and I was like, hee hee. And I was like wearing it or whatever. And then we went to, 
I think it was Osaka. I don't think I got anything in Hiroshima other than the brushes and that was not tax free. Um, so it was when I was in Osaka, I went to a huge stationery store called Tokyo Hands. If you guys are into stationery, go to Tokyo Hands. Hands. Gigantic. It was like seven floors of just everything. So anyway, went to Tokyo Hands and then um, I, th I, so because this was a bigger department store and not like the boutique we were in, what you do is you do all your shopping and then you go to a tax-free counter. So you do all your shopping, you pay the tax, then you go to this tax-free counter, you show them all the receipts and the stuff that you purchased, and then they give you your tax back. So um, the, the tax, so then, you know, you get the tax back and then they, again, they put it in this big plastic bag, but it was a little bit more intense where it was like, do not open or whatever. And I think they gave me like actually a piece of paper that talked a little bit more about it. So basically if you purchase something in Japan as a foreigner, they allow you to, to basically not pay taxes, but the catch is you're not supposed to open or use anything in Japan. So that's why they put it in these plastic bags and it's supposed to stay sealed and everything. So I was like, oh man, you know, like I had purchased all this like stationery and I wanted to, you know, play with it and put it into my traveler's notebook or whatever, like every night, like I was hoping to do that. And it was all sealed up and I was like, crap. Oh, okay. Well, I guess that's what you get for not paying tax free. And, um, and so I didn't really know like what was going to happen again. I, they stapled paperwork into the passport. So I was like, okay you know, that's fine. And so we kept purchasing stuff tax free. And like my passport is huge. Now it just has all this paper in it. And I had all these plastic bags of stuff. So on the last day in Tokyo, a friend of mine who actually lives in New York, but he's originally from Japan, um, Takashi, he is a makeup artist. And he just coincidentally got into Tokyo, like a, the same day we got to Tokyo. And so on the last day we were there, we were able to hang out. So because he travels to Tokyo or Japan all the time and back and forth between Tokyo and New York, um, I asked him, I was like, what is the deal with this tax free? I'm like, why does it have to stay sealed? Like, do they care? Are they going to check? And he was like, no, like they don't. He was like, looking at me like I was crazy. He was like, who keeps it in the plastic bag? He's like, how are you supposed to pack that? And I was like, exactly. So anyway, so I thought, you know what? I am, what is going on? <laughs> Um, uh, oh yeah, Loft, Loft is great too. Very, very kind of similar to Tokyo Hands. Um, so, I know it sounds interesting. Recently, Japan tax is up to 10%. You know, on October 1st, the Japan tax went up to 10%, I think from 8%. So anyway, long story short, I, on the last day when I was packing to come home, I was like, F it. I just like tore everything open because I couldn't pack it as well and as efficiently as I wanted to. So I threw everything, all the plastic and all the bags and everything out. I did keep my receipts. I was like, just in case I kept all my receipts, kept everything in my passport or whatever, but coming into the U S First of all, I'm on the plane and they're like, if you have a US or a Canada passport, you don't even have to fill out the customs form. And I was like, okay. And then we landed. And then, so I had to change in Seattle. Sorry, I'm like foggy on what happened. I had to change in Seattle. So that's where I had to go through immigration and then go through customs. Immigration, I stuck my passport into a machine because I have global entry. It gave me a printout. I gave the printout to someone else. I got my luggage. I gave it to someone else. And that was it. <laughs> like no one checked anything. And I was like, so I could have opened it earlier on my trip and used it and blah, blah, blah. So anyway, lesson learned. I don't know if other countries are more strict, but in the U S apparently they don't really care. So just FYI, um, my passport, no need, keep plastic back ceiling. <laughs> Um, no, so respectful. That, that would be so pleasant. Julie, I mean, definitely go to Japan. It is, it's so, so amazing. So, so amazing. Um, okay. So it's just a law thing. Rip it out. So I'm going to, I'm going to take all that paperwork out of my passport. That's fine. Okay. <clears throat> 
Um, oh God, there was some, I knew I should have written this down. There was something else I wanted to mention before we go. We've been on for about an hour. Um, before you go though, please don't forget to give this a, a thumbs up. <laughs> give this video a thumbs up for sure. That'll definitely help me out. Um, share this if there's someone else that you think um, is is thinking about going to Japan or um, wanting to travel. Um, <laughs> thanks, Nicole. Uh, you were supposed to stop at customs in Tokyo and they unstaple the receipts from your passport. Okay, so I left from Narita. That did not happen. Um, my friend left from Haneda and that happened to her. So she texted me after she went through customs at Haneda and she was like, they just ripped everything out of my passport. So don't worry about it. But I think I went through customs in Seattle versus customs in Japan. So that was it. Um, You know, it's so interesting. I feel like certain countries have certain relationships because you would think between the US and Canada, it would be just as easy. But Canadian customs, I think because of prescription drugs, is the most intense customs I have ever been through. Dogs, wands, questions, like my luggage completely like, you know, ripped to shreds, torn apart and everything. And I was like, I thought we were friends. <laughs> Um, so I think it really just depends on the country's um, relationship with one another. With one another. Um, as a Japanese, I recommend you travel to Japan. Living in Japan is different. That's always the case. That is always the case. Um, yay. Oh, thanks, Rugged Glam. Thumbs up. Um, I live in Seattle and never go to Canada. They are so mean. <laughs> They were, they were so mean with my luggage. I mean, I loved Canada. I love Canada. I've been to Toronto and Montreal and both times were amazing. Um, but yeah, the, the, the travel was intense. It was definitely intense. Um, oh, so, you know, a lot of people have been asking me why, why I didn't um, purchase any skincare um, in Japan. And I, for one thing, I really just didn't plan very well. I should have done my research before I went there because when I got there and I was looking at it, everything is in Japanese, <laughs> of course. Everything is in Japanese. And with the language barrier, I couldn't figure out some of the ingredients. And I have very, very sensitive eczema prone. In fact, I have some eczema up here right now popping up, I think from the humidity in Japan. Um, and so actually I should finish my skincare. And, um, so I just, I just didn't want to purchase any skincare. I was just too, like, uh, it was too much. And, um, it was expensive. The makeup there was very, very expensive. Um, I thought it was going to be cheaper. So, um, I don't know if it was a matter of, um, the exchange rate or if things are, just more expensive there. I just, I didn't, I didn't really know what was going on. So that's why I didn't buy that much makeup. And that's why I didn't buy any skincare. Um, oh, so the Google translate, um, app, whenever I, whenever I held that up, it just went crazy. Like it was, it was pretty helpful if it was just like a, a, a big sign, but when I held it up to a box with like the little writing, it just didn't, it just didn't do that well for me. Um, I don't know if I needed to be a little bit more patient and kind of stand there. Um, but the one place also where I was doing a lot of my um, makeup and skincare shopping, it was effing hot. It was so, so hot in there. And I mentioned this in my makeup haul. I, I just couldn't even stand in that part of the store because they were renovating and they're not that big on air conditioning too. It was never like blasting anywhere. And so I was just freaking hot. So anyway. Um, when I use my, oh, I have a funny story actually. So, uh, the bathrooms in Japan I'm obsessed with. So, um, they all have like the built-in bidets, those Toto, um, toilets with like the built-in bidets. Some are fancier than others, but, but most of them have that at least like the bidet or the, basically the butt spray. So I was sitting in the toilet and I was, I think in the train station in, Osaka. And I think I was waiting to get on the train to go to Tokyo. So made a little pit stop. And so I was sitting in the toilet and I had my phone and I was like, you know, I had my Google translate and the camera up. And so when you have the camera up, you can point it at different languages and then it'll actually in the 
like on your screen, it'll translate it for you. It'll actually change the words for you into English or whatever language you choose. So, so I held it up to the panel with the bidet, the butt spray, all that kind of stuff. And I held it up to uh, the bidet function and it translated the, the characters to ass spray. <laughs> I actually took a screenshot of that. Maybe I'll post it on my Instagram. But I thought that was um, so, I thought that was so funny. I started laughing so hard in the bathroom. They probably thought I was nuts. Um, but yeah, so Google Translate camera is um, is a wonderful, wonderful tool when it works. Um, but I want to say it works maybe half of the time for me, at least. So yeah. Um, Oh, this is the other thing I want to address. So I did not bring or wear any makeup while I was in Japan. So the reason why I didn't bring any makeup, this has been asked of me a lot. The reason why I didn't bring any makeup is because I only wanted carry on when I got there because I just, I knew <clears throat> that when I got there, we were going straight to Kyoto, which was another like two, two and a half hour train ride. And to wait for luggage and then go the whole thing. I was like, forget it. So I was like, I'm just going to be doing carry on. So I was like, makeup's not going to fit at all. And I was like, you know what? I'm on vacation. Let's let my skin breathe. Maybe I won't have time to put it on anyway. So, and I was like, and I'm going to be buying plenty of makeup there. Well, I didn't buy plenty of makeup and I was under the impression that it had to be kept in that stupid plastic bag. So even with the makeup that I purchased, I couldn't use it. Um, so anyway, um, so so what I did was I I went with just carry on, but I packed a big tote, like a foldable tote, and I filled that up with stuff. So I ended up checking that in on the way back. So that's basically what I did. I think some people, what they do is they put their small carry on into a large piece of luggage and they check that on the way there and then they, you know, and then they pick it up and then they shop and they fill up the large piece of luggage or the other way around, whatever it is. Um, but I just, I just didn't want to check anything in on the way there. Like I just wanted to like get to Tokyo and just go and get on the train because again, it was one of those, like we were going to be up for 30 hours and I just wanted to go. So anyway, um, Happy B has um, in the chat has a very good uh, recommendation for using Google Translate. Oh, okay. Okay, okay, okay. That sounds good. Um, I did not get the Decorte Repair Foundation in Japan. Um, they have Decorte at Saks here, so I wonder if they have it at the Saks. Um, and maybe it'll be less expensive. I couldn't believe how expensive the makeup was. I really thought it was gonna be at least like the same, but no, I don't know. Um, all right, I'm gonna put on my face cream and then I'm going to uh, log off. But do you guys have any questions about Japan? <laughs> I hope those tips were helpful. Um, multitasking makeup products to fit into my luggage. Well, I didn't bring any makeup, but let me think. I do like um, sticks, you know, like, like blush sticks that you can kind of use on your eyelids and on your lips and stuff. Um, what else do I like for multitasking makeup? I guess any of those palettes. Um, did you guys see the new Tarte set that I think that has come out for Christmas? They look like pucks and there's three of them and there's three different levels in each. There's three of them and then three different levels in each. And one is like a highlighter, blush and bronze. And they just swing out and swing open, but they close into this really small round thing. And it's not expensive. I think for all three, it's like between 30 and $40. Anyway, I looked at that and thought that would be great for travel because you have three products in this one little thing. Um, um, sorry, my chat keeps uh, jumping up. Any Oh, Cindy's asking, any big regrets on purchases you passed on in Japan? I have, 
most of my regrets is on the food. Like I wish I bought more of the black sesame cakes. Um, in Kyoto, they had a lot of like matcha treats, which they didn't have. Yeah, they didn't have in the other cities. So I would have purchased um, more of those. And then in Kyoto, and I couldn't find this anywhere else, they had apple flavored Coca-Cola. Okay, can I just tell you, I'm not even a soda drinker, but when I saw that, I was like, I gotta try this. It was so, it was so good. It was so good. I wonder if just pour some apple juice into Coke, if it would kind of be the same, because that was kind of the idea of it. But man, I wish I bought more bottles of that. But I, you know, I got one in Kyoto and I was like, oh, okay, I'll just, oh, I like this. You know, if I see it anywhere else, I'll just pick it up. Didn't see it again, only in Kyoto. Um, and then I did pick up some sneakers from this company called Flower Mountain, which I've never seen here in the US. Um, and I bought two pairs and I was debating a third and I should have just bought the third. <laughs> I should have just bought the third pair. I don't know if I could have fit anywhere, but um, yeah, anyway, uh, that was a big regret of mine. Um, Oh my gosh, I love Moo Ramen in LIC. I did not know that they had a Japanese apple juice there. Oh my gosh. Um, Eden St. James, can we get them online? What what did you want to get online? Let me know. Did you bring back any food from Japan? The only um, food I brought back, I did buy some apple Kit Kats, which were lovely, but not quite as magical as the apple uh, Coca-Cola. Um, I did bring back some Tokyo banana treats. Uh, they didn't travel that well. They're okay. They're okay. I, I like the Tokyo banana treats, but um, I the cream inside really was like mashed banana. And I thought I was expecting more of like a Twinkie cream. So they were a little bit different for me. Um, oh, Flower Mountain. Yes, you can get them online. So it's like flowermountain.com. They have um, an Instagram, um, an Instagram feed if you want to follow them. The sneakers, I don't think they're available in the US, um, but you can order them uh, for sure. So I may order, I may order them. Uh, and definitely check out their size guide because their sizing is a little bit different, but their size guide is very accurate. Is their chocolate less sweet? I don't know. I'm I'm not a big chocolate fan, so I didn't really get any um, chocolate stuff. The chocolate Kit Kats that I got, those are the same. They taste the same to me. Um, I went to the website and couldn't find them in English. You can change the language at the top of their website, of the Flower Mountain website. Yeah, I think it, the default is Italy. That's where the sneakers are made. Um, yeah, they have a ton, they're obsessed with Kit Kats. They have Kit Kat stores, Kit Kat boutiques. Amazing, amazing. Nicole, I'm getting hungry. I'm getting hungry too, what time is it? Okay, I should, um, I should hop off. How does matcha taste? Matcha is very bitter all by itself. Um, what was your takeaway highlight from the brush festival? Um, I say there was two, I want to say one was the brush burning festival. I thought that was very special. Um, and it wasn't long and it wasn't this long and drawn out ceremony. Um, a gentleman stood up, spoke in Japanese, which of course I did not understand, uh, but didn't speak for very long. And then, um, you know, they had like a little, basically looked like a little fire pit going, <coughs> excuse me. Um, and he waved, uh, like a, branch over it and then, you know, threw some brushes on there. So that was really special. And the other thing that was really special was Mr. Takamori, who is the chairman of Chikahoto. He signed the inside of my um, brush box. And that was, I was so touched. So um, yeah, so those were definitely the highlights for sure. Um, all right, well guys, um, definitely give this video a thumbs up <laughs> if you wouldn't mind and subscribe if you are into new release 
reviews because I've got a bunch coming. Um, like I mentioned, I've got the Pat McGrath Blitz Astral Quads coming, the Natasha Denona Gold stuff coming. I did purchase the brand new La Mer highlighter. I purchased the limited edition Clay de Poe press powder, the Chantecai real stick. I think it's a concealer. I think people think it's a foundation, but I was reading into it. I'm like, I think this is a concealer. Um, I did order that and I ordered some of the Guerlain holiday stuff. Anyway, things are coming out like crazy. I'm trying to keep up, um, but yeah. <laughs> So anyway, don't forget to subscribe. Don't forget to give this video a thumbs up. And I'm also going to be doing a part three Japan haul of all the kind of miscellaneous stuff that I purchased. But I hope you guys have a wonderful day. Have a wonderful weekend. Um, and thank you so, so much for tuning in. I always appreciate how many people like show up to these <laughs> live streams. It just, it warms my heart. So thank you so, so much. And um, do not forget to check out my Instagram stories if you want like a little bit more in-depth information about where I went. And um, cause I, I think I, I pretty much geotagged everywhere that I went. So if you are interested, um, definitely check that out. So anyway, it was so, so great to see you. I'm so happy to be back, even though Japan was amazing, but I will see you in my next video and in my next live stream. Bye guys.